the name of the Lord. Amen. Had God been good? Hey, yes, he has. Amen. If God's been good to you and you know he's been good to you, go ahead on and give him some praise because he deserves it. Amen. Glory be to his name. Thank you, God. Oh, bless your wonderful and mighty name, God. You've been more than enough for us, God, and we are appreciated and we thank you. Amen. To God be the glory. Well, saints, tonight we find ourselves back in the book of Proverbs, amen, the 25th chapter, amen, glory be to God. But before we go there, let us pray. Lord, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank you now, God, for truly being wonderful and amazing and kind unto us, God. We thank you, God, for all your blessings. We pray now in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that you will grant unto us by your spirit, God, your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding, your power, your might. We pray that the anointing God not only fall, but that it uh, come on in and occupy us, that it fall fresh upon our hearts. And may we be found in all things, giving you glory, honor, and praise. For us in the precious and mighty and wonderful name of Christ, we do pray this prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Glory be to God. I need to ask First Lady, are we all right tonight, First Lady? Yes, yeah, it's doing <laughs> amen do we need some more light or are we good amen to god be the glory amen well saints first of all amen before we get into this text i want to explain one thing from sunday service amen on sunday service i said um, god found you amen and, and let me explain why i said that i said that in the aspect of the text of things being lost God is never being lost. The person that's being that has been lost was us. Amen. We was all of us was lost at some point in time. And what God did, Amen, to find us, Amen, or help us find ourselves in Him, Amen. He planted a word, Amen. And the word of God did what? It drew you unto Him, Amen. And when it drew you unto Him, you made a conscious decision to take Him as Lord and Savior of your lives. Amen. So in that aspect of, of being found uh, um, by God, amen, he, he found a lost soul, which was you, and he found you by his word. Amen. Amen. Well, moving right along. Amen. In this 25th chapter of, of, of Proverbs, we find ourselves now around verse number 15. Amen. We we did 14 verses last week, and, and we're going to, by the grace of God, make it through uh, 14 verses tonight. Amen. Amen. Man, first lady was talking earlier and she said, you know, you, you can spend an hour on 14 verses. I said, yeah, probably so. I said, but you, you, you can spend an hour on, on three verses. You can spend an hour on, on one verse. Amen. I told you, you can preach on amen by itself. Hey, amen. Glory. Have mercy. Amen. Meaning, meaning so be it. Amen. amen. Glory. Have mercy. But, but whatever the spirit of the Lord says, amen, we want to be found obedient unto that. Amen. And tonight, so we are here in the 25th chapter of Proverbs in verse number 15. Uh, glory and have mercy. Amen. In verse, uh, well, I'll go back to verse 14. Last week, we ended it with verse 14, which says, whoso boasted himself of the of a false gift is like clouds and wind without rain. Amen. Uh, uh, we talked about uh, uh, giving in the aspect that People who didn't give much boast like they gave so much, and people, you know, and even pretty much saying, "Don't be a liar, Amen. Don't, don't, don't exaggerate, Amen. Let the truth be what the truth, Amen. amen. If you want to be a big giver, be a, a big oh giver, Amen. God. Glory, have mercy. But don't broadcast that you won and you know you gave little, Amen. Glory, have mercy. But nevertheless, Amen. In verse number fifteen of this twenty-fifth uh, chapter of of Proverbs, the writer says this. He says, by long forbearing is a, is a prince persuaded and a soft song, a soft tongue, I'm sorry, a soft tongue breaketh the bone. By long forbearing is a prince persuaded and a soft tongue breaketh the bone. Amen. Uh, uh, the writer says, our self-control and patience can persuade great men to our cause. Even a ruler such as a prince, in this case, a prince meaning a judge, a, a magistrate, 
one who decides matters, amen. And he said, uh, uh, by long forbearing, amen, by our self-control and patience, amen, we can persuade such a person, amen, this, this making the decisions, amen. He said, in a soft tongue break it, the bone. Amen. Glory. Amen. Uh, a gentle tongue breaks the bone. Uh, the patient, gentle words of a wise man or woman can have a great impact over a long period of time. He says such words can have bone breaking power. Amen. Mm -hmm. Glory. Have mercy. If, if you want to have this kind of power in your life, tell somebody, say, learn to speak with a soft tongue. Amen. It, it doesn't mean a soft voice you got to whisper, but it means let what, how you live uh, match up with what you say. Amen. Glory mm -hmm. be to God. Your, your, your speak should be characteristic of, of, of how you live and, and the things that you believe. Amen. And and so uh, the Bible also says a, a soft answer turneth away much wrath. That same soft tongue, that same soft persona. Amen. That that humble persona. Amen. That that, that speaks in such a way. Amen. That 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 it can uh, 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 that it can uh, um, break things in your life. It can break situations in life. Tell somebody, say, it can make you free. It can make you Amen. free. Amen. Right. And, it, and it can persuade others in your favor. Amen. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Amen. We, we've we uh, even testified on times. I and myself, I and, and First Lady uh, have uh, testified about how uh, being in certain situations, how the person before us, uh, acted up, amen, and, but when we got there, we spoke with a, a soft tongue, and, and, and certain things happened, what, in our favor, amen, amen. So, amen. so so, the word of God is true, amen, we just got to put it to practice, amen, glory be to God, the, the uh, scholar Bridges said this, he said about the verse, he said the gentle tongue breaking a bone might seem to be a paradox, he said, but it is a fine illustration of the power of gentleness, above hardness and irritation. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. Uh, we live in a society where we think everything, we think everybody got to be hard. Amen. And, and we being so hard that we ain't getting anywhere. Uh-oh. Glory be to God. Amen. But tell somebody, say a soft answer. Amen. Soft answer. A soft tongue. Amen. It, 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 it break it the bone. Amen. It, it, it'll, somebody say it'll make a way. It will grant favor. Amen. Glory be to to God. Amen. That was Proverbs the 25th chapter verse 15. Proverbs 25th chapter verse 16 the writer says, has thou found honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for thee. Least thou be filled therewith and vomit it. Oh glory have mercy. In other words this particular verse passage is talk, it teaches us uh, moderation in all things uh, pertaining to life. Too much of anything. Amen. Over uh, indulgence, amen, glory, have mercy, uh, 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 a simple way, I don't want you to go find out, but if you just don't believe the text, amen, go get your favorite food, amen, and, and, and continue to just eat it, know you full and satisfied, but just continue to, to eat it, amen, sooner or later, what, uh, you might find yourself in the toilet, amen, what, vomiting it up, right, because, well, why, because you overindulge, I mean, you didn't take it in moderation, and so, it's saying the same thing about honey, amen, it said, if you found the honey, it said, eat that what is sufficient, that is satisfying, that, you know, to, that's satisfying to you, but, but don't go over and beyond, uh, don't overindulge, amen, the, the pleasures that we enjoy in this life, amen, learn to, to have them, what, in moderation, amen, so, so that's what this text is talking about in the 25th chapter of Proverbs, verse 15, by long, I mean, verse 16, hast thou found honey, eat so much as is sufficient for thee, least thou be filled therewith, and vomit it, amen, tell somebody, say, just just maintain, amen, have self-control, overindulgence in good things is harmful and, and counterproductive, amen, so, so let's not overindulge, just learn to enjoy it, but not overindulge in it, amen, amen, glory, have mercy, uh, that's Proverbs the 25th chapter, verse 16, Proverbs 25th and 17, amen, glory, have mercy, uh, this, this particular text made me think about many things, but this is what it says. It said, withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house, 
lest he be weary of thee and so hate thee. Uh oh, glory, have mercy. It is expected that neighbors would visit neighbors, but such hospitality should not be uh, uh, abused. Amen. Glory, have mercy. Uh, Mom and them used to say it this way. Amen. Uh, don't wear out your welcome. Amen. Anybody ever heard that? Don't, don't wear out your welcome. And, and so when I started thinking about this text and I thought about uh, what they would say sometimes, I also had this thought. Amen. I'm just going to put this thought out there and we're going to go on. Amen. Oftentimes we'll say, well, uh, uh, um, back in the day, we'll say mama and them or uh, papa and them or grandma or whoever didn't really know no better. But, but when you learn some of the things that they said, amen, based on where they got them from, amen, for instance, don't wear out your welcome. Amen. They might not have, have said, withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house, lest he be weary of thee and so hate <laughs> thee. But it had what? The, the same, same meaning. Same, so the same so meaning. they were, in a sense, such as we are. People choose to follow what they want to follow. Amen. But, right. but you can't do that in the word of God. It's either you got to follow all of it or you might well not follow any of it. Oh. You, 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 you no, understand what I'm no. saying? Because what? Uh, the word of God is, is a all-inclusive. <laughs> I'll say it like that. You got to take everything in it for what it is. Amen. And, and so when I thought about this, I said, man, you know what? The, the, the folk, they were speaking the word. Amen. But at the same time, they are just like we are today. They, choose, they chose what they would be obedient to and what they wouldn't be obedient to. But I'm saying to you today, tonight... As a born again Christian, Amen. We don't have a choice of whether we we uh, we don't get to choose what we gonna be obedient to and what we're not. When we accepted salvation, we accepted the fact that we were gonna do everything within our means to be obedient to the Word of God. Amen. Amen. It, 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 look, you might not like it sometimes, but but still, tell somebody be obedient. Be obedient. It, it's better to be obedient and go to heaven than to be disobedient and go to hell. That's what, it, that's what it comes down to. So, so although mom and them didn't say, withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house, lest he be weary of thee and so hate thee, they just said, don't wear out your welcome. Amen. I know some of y'all got some other things that they used to say. And one day, I, I tell you what, amen, glory, have mercy. One day, let's just try to write those things down and see if we can base them on the word of God. Oh. See, see if they come from the word of God. They just might be may have been said differently in the word of God, but they give the same meaning. Don't wear out your welcome meaning. Don't stay no longer than you have to. Don't don't go so many times. It, it, it's, it's almost like that other saying. I, mean, I got another one where they tell you, you know, don't come visit me every every weekend. Give, give me a chance to miss you. Uh-oh, somebody help me out. Hey, glory. Help me. Uh, nevertheless, amen. In this particular 17th verse of the 25th, chapter of Proverbs. Amen. It says the wise man or woman will be sensitive to the sense that a neighbor may become weary of their presence. It says since good neighborly relationships make life much better, this is an important principle of wisdom. Amen. Don't wear out your welcome. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. Uh, Walty, the scholar Walty said this. Amen. He said friendships uh, ripens through discreet sensitivity not to intrude on privacy and to allow space to be a per person in his own right, not through self-enjoyment uh, or imposition. Without that discretion, instead of enriching life, friendships takes away from it. That's what Walty said. But I like how Trapp said it, amen. Uh, the scholar Trapp said this. He said, at first thou mayest be o rich, as the Hebrew proverb hath it, welcome as a traveler that stays for a day. At length thou will be tovich, a charge, a burden. And lastly, by long tarrying, thou shalt be borich, an outcast, hunted out of the house that thou hast so immodestly haunted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell somebody, say, don't wear out your welcome, don't amen. It, it's the same way as saying Proverbs 25 and 17. Withdraw thou foot from thy neighbor's house, lest he be weary of thee, and so hate thee. Hey, glory. I think y'all y'all get the full one. Y'all get the, the meaning of that. Amen. That was Proverbs the 25th chapter, verse 17. In Proverbs the 25th chapter, verse 18 and 19, the writer says this. He says, a man that bared false witness against his neighbor is a maul and a sword and a sharp arrow. 
Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. What'd you say? Uh oh, glory. Have mercy. A man who bears false false witness. Amen. Uh, many proverbs speak about the man who bears false witness. Amen. We we even saw it in in uh, earlier parts of, of Proverbs. Amen. It said, a uh, false witness is a liar. It said, this lie, the liar, whether in court of law or common, conver common conversations, does great damage. He is like a, a, a club. That's what it means when it talks about a mall, a, a war club, uh, a sword, or a sharp arrow. It is not a small sin to bear a false witness against a neighbor. Yeah, glory, have mercy, amen. Uh, um, the Walt, he said this, he said, for in, when he was describing the three things about a liar or, or false witness, he said this, he said, for in close battle, he used the war club or a, or a mace. Uh, for less close, but still hand-to-hand -hand fighting, the sword or a dagger or a scimitar. He said, and for long distance fighting, the bow and arrow. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. Those things were used in war. And so therefore, if they were used in war, and here he is using it in this text about a, a liar. Amen. Tell somebody, uh, uh, those were tools of war and they caused damage. Amen. So therefore, a liar will cause what? Damage. It, it doesn't matter what tool he used. We already know his tool is what? Uh, uh, to put out false information. Amen. To not tell the truth. Tell somebody, say, don't, 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 don't be a, a liar. Be a liar. Amen. That's, that's not in the character that God has, has given us. So therefore, let's not be something that God uh, told us not to be. Amen. It said uh, uh, about this verse also, it said that the tongue wounds four people at one stroke. Amen. The person harms himself, the object of his attack, anyone who listens to his words, and the name of God. It said, flee from deadly, from this deadly disease. That was the scholar Bridges, amen. And, and I know some of y'all said, well, how does it uh, uh, um, harm uh, um, the name of God? Well, if you're a born again Christian, amen, glory, amen, and you're known as a liar, amen, people gonna say, you know, what God do you serve? Yeah, you serve that kind of God to go around just allowing you to lie? Uh, so, so, so tell somebody, say, the man got a point. Amen. It hurts four people. The person lying, the person lied about, uh, people who listen to the lie in the name of the Lord. Amen. Yes, yes, it does. Amen. So that's Proverbs to the 25th um, chapter, verses 18 and 19. Amen. In 19, it says, uh, a confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken uh, tooth, a foot out of, of joint. Uh, uh, confidence in an unfaithful man, a treacherous man. Hey, glory be to God. It said the two Proverbs are connected because a man who bears false witness is often also uh, the unfaithful man in time of trouble. Amen. If, if he's lying, amen, don't think he's going to lie for you when you're in trouble. Amen. He probably the cause of the, the trouble. Amen. Glory. An unfaithful man. He said in one aspect he brings pain. In the other aspect, he is a pain. Uh, the unfaithful man is useless and like a persistent, deal, uh, debilitating pain. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. When I looked at this and it said, uh, uh, confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. Hey, glory. Have mercy. That foot out of joint. Amen. You ever had something out of joint? It, it, it hurts. Yeah. It, 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 it brings pain, amen, glory, a, a broken tooth, amen, after your lip done went down and everything, and, and you get used to it being like that, you know, you, you might be all right, but at the time that it got broke, it causes what? Pain, amen, glory, have mercy, so, so he's just simply saying that if you're going to put your confidence in an unfaithful person, a treacherous person, somebody say, just say, expect pain. Expect pain, amen, because why? They, 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 he's, he's like a, a, a one who bears a false witness. He, he's like a liar, amen. So nothing good is going to come out of you putting your trust in somebody who's unfaithful, amen? Amen, glory be to God. That's Proverbs, the 25th chapter, verses uh, 18 and 19. Amen. 
Glory. Proverbs, the 25th chapter, verse number 20. Amen. It said, As he that taketh away a garment in cold weather, and as vinegar upon nitre, uh, so is he that singeth songs to a heavy heart. Oh, man. Glory. First thing I want to say about this verse is tell somebody, say, be sensitive to the Spirit of God. Be sensitive to the, the Spirit of God. Amen. Uh, in this particular case, amen, he makes some analogies concerning um, uh, people who sing songs to a, a heavy heart. Amen. If, if you sing songs that are not appropriate, amen, glory, then, then you cause more of a, you cause uh, uh, the wound to take a little longer to heal. Amen. For instance, he said, as he that taketh away a, a, a garment in cold weather. Amen. If it's cold outside, ain't no way in the world I want you to what? Take my coat. If it's cold outside, I'm talking about, I'm talking about ice cold. I'm talking about zero below. You know what I'm saying? And, and you come and you want to take my long john. That, that, that just, that don't even sound good, do it? Yeah. Amen. So, and he said, just like that or as vinegar upon nitrate. Vinegar upon nitrate was like uh, they're carbonated today like our carbonated water. It's like you having a soda and I'm going to bring vinegar and pour it in the, in the soda. Hey Amen. He, he's saying when you sing the wrong songs to a heavy heart, you, 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 you're doing damage like that, putting, putting vinegar in a, in a soda or, or taking away the garments in, in cold weather. Amen. Tell somebody, I said, just be sensitive. To the spirit of Lord, be sensitive to, to what people are are going through. Amen. Uh, 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 if we're sensitive to the spirit of God, even in times like that, God would He will provide something that what that will uh, uh, what word I'm looking for encourage. But only if we will stay connected uh, to the spirit of God in the will of God. Amen. Sometimes it ain't nothing, it, it's, it's nothing to be said. Just your presence alone what could, could, could encourage somebody. Somebody say, sometimes you need to sing a song that's quiet. Mm. How, how, how about that? Amen. A quiet song. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. But nevertheless, in Proverbs, the 25th chapter, verse number 20, he said, as he did take it away a garment in cold weather and as vinegar upon nitrate, so is he that singeth songs to a heavy heart. In other words, let's be sensitive to um, to the spirit of God, sensitive to, to um, the situation and circumstance that are happening in people's lives. I didn't say don't tell the truth. I said be sensitive to the spirit because the spirit always what? Tells the truth. Amen. To God be the glory. Uh, the scholar Morgan simply said this. He said the proverb indicates the imperfect uh, propriety of making merry in the presence of sorrow. It is wrong in method and serves to increase distress rather than to soothe it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So let's, let's be uh, sensitive and mindful to um, the spirit of God and sensitive and mindful to the situation uh, that's at hand. Amen? <laughs> Excuse me. Proverbs, the 25th chapter, verses 21 and 22. The writer writes, if thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. Tell somebody, say, don't, 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 don't take it. Um, what word I want to say? Don't take matters into your own hands. Amen. Uh, uh, the word of God says, even your enemy. Amen. Somebody say, uh, that's mercy. Amen. When, 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 when you can do the things that God asks you to do to your, to your enemy, that, that, that's mercy. Amen. He said, if thy enemy be hungry, what? Give him bread to eat. If he be thirsty, give him what? Water to drink. Amen. He said, uh, for one reason, amen, he said, for thou shalt uh, shall heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. Amen. Glory. If we don't remember anything else about this particular um, verse, you ought to tell somebody God is the rewarder. God Amen. The rewarder. Stop looking for folk to reward you. Amen. Even with our enemies, we figure we gave them this, they ought to give us something. We gave, you know what I'm saying? But God is your reward. As a born again Christian, amen. As a child of God, amen. Our, our reward is the, 
is the Lord God Almighty, and, and he knows and sees everything that's going on. But in this particular verse, amen, uh, even the Bible itself, if, if we began to read in Matthew, the fifth chapter, amen, it's, uh, it talks about how we should treat our enemies. It says the Bible commands us to, to have giving, love, and care even to our enemies, amen. It's a human nature would tell us to hate our enemy, but the Bible tells us what? To love our enemies and to do it practically, amen. Glory be to God. Even Jesus spoke about uh, loving our, our enemies, amen, and and, uh, and praying for our, our enemies. And and when we do these things, amen, uh, it says, for so you would heap coals of fire on his head. You know, commentators have, have uh, had their differences about this heap, heaping coals upon their heads. But the bottom line is uh, one commentator said, uh, you are to do these things so that it convicts the enemy, amen. And it convicts the enemy to the point that he wants to be more like you as far as being like Christ, as, as being giving and, and kind. And, and so even though they have their different thoughts about what um, heaps of coals, heap coals of fire on his head, the bottom line is this. We ought to do good even unto our enemies. We ought to treat our enemies with mercy and, and kindness, amen, and, and knowing that we do the things that we do not for rewards from them and, and not even for rewards from God, but because we do these things, God is what? He is a rewarder, amen, glory, have mercy, amen. The Bible says, uh, for without faith, it, it's impossible to please God, you know what I'm saying? For he that cometh to God must believe what that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. Don't you know that doing good to your enemies is a part of you diligently seeking God? Why? Because you are fulfilling the commandment. And since you are fulfilling the commandment, amen, God's going to reward you. Amen. Tell somebody say, if you want to be rewarded, if you want to be rewarded, amen. Say just do the commandments. Mm -hmm. Seek God and do the commandments, amen, for he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, amen, amen, glory. Not just seek him in, 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 in one scripture, somebody say in all scripture, in amen. All scripture. So this is what Proverbs, the 25th chapter, verse 21 and 22 are, are um, showing us tonight, amen, glory, have mercy. The uh, scholar Myers he said this about verse 21 and 22. He said, do you think that others have wronged you? Pity them, pray for them, seek them out, show them their fault humbly and meekly, wash their feet, take the moat out of their eye, seek to restore them in a spirit of meekness, remembering that you may be tempted. Heap coals of loving kindness on their heads. Bring them, if possible, into into such a broken and tender frame of mind that they may seek forgiveness at your hand and God's. If you cannot act thus with all the emotion you would feel, do it because it is right and the emotion will inevitably follow. Ah, uh, Gloria. That was the scholar Maya. Amen. The 21st and 22nd uh, verses of Proverbs, the 25th chapter. Amen. In Proverbs, the 25th chapter, chapter, verse 23, the writer says this. He said, the north wind driveth away rain, so doth an angry countenance a backbiting tongue. Oh, have mercy. Uh-oh. The north wind driveth away rain, so doth an angry countenance a backbiting tongue. Amen. Uh, with the north wind, uh, it brings forth rain. So there was an expectation that when the north wind blew, that it was going to what? Bring the rain in. That, that was an expectation. Amen. So it is with backbiting. Amen. When, when you begin the backbiting, amen, you ought to know that it brings, in this case, it's the north wind that brings in what? Uh, uh, an angry count countenance. Amen. Just like the north wind brings in the rain, it's a cause and effect. Uh, uh, situation, amen. So if you're backbiting, amen, and somebody know you backbite, backbiting about them, amen, glory, and when you see them, they look like they angry at you, tell somebody that's the north wind bringing the rain. 
Amen. Glory. It's a cause and effect. Back, a backbiting tongue will cause an angry countenance. Amen. Tell somebody backbiting ain't a part of who we are. Oh it ought God. not be what? In your character. Jesus. Amen. Help and if it's heart. in your character, amen, you ought to ask God what? For deliverance. Mm. It, it, it's just that, that simple. Amen. Uh, the scholar Walt, he said this. He's a hostile speech from a No, I, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. Amen. Uh, uh, verse 23. Amen. The north wind drives away rain. So does an angry countenance, a backbiting tongue. Amen. Uh, uh, anybody, I mean, well, I shouldn't say anybody, but but when we look in the world that we live in, amen, there are a lot of things that are what? Cause and effect. Amen. Glory. I mean, in, in, in my flesh, amen, my flesh says, if you hit me, all the what? Hit you okay. back. That the cause of you hitting me was the effect of what me hitting you back. You know what I'm saying? That's that's just natural, amen. But but tell somebody say we're not natural beings, amen. We're we're spiritual beings. We just live in a natural world, amen. But but since we're spiritual, amen. Glory, amen. First of all, we're not gonna follow the cause in effect. Well, then again, to some. To, to some degree, amen. You say, well, Pastor, what you mean to some degree? When I say to some degrees, I'm talking about cause and effect in a different way. Give you an example. Cause God's been good to me, it brings on my praise. Uh-oh, somebody help me today, amen. Cause God is wonderful and kind and amazing. Well, he gets my what? My worship, amen. There are some things that are cause and effect, but tell somebody, say, those spiritual. Amen. Those are spiritual, and, and everybody can't get with that. Amen. Because yeah. if you hit some folk, they go what? Hit you back. Amen. Glory. But the Bible tells me to turn the other cheek. Amen. Glory. Help. Ah, somebody say, cause and effect. Cause and effect. Just knows that the north wind driveth away rain, so doth an angry countenance a backbiting tongue. Amen. So that's a cause and effect thing in verses 23 of the 25th chapter. Of Proverbs. Amen. Glory be to God. Proverbs 25th chapter verse 24. The writer writes, it is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman and in a wide house. Amen. Glory. We, 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 we've heard verses of, of this nature mm -hmm. before. Amen. Such as in Proverbs 21st uh, chapter verse number 9. Amen. Let me Turn on over to that right quick. Proverbs 21 and 9. Amen. In Proverbs 21 and 9, it says, It is better to dwell in the corner of a housetop than with a brawling woman in a wide house. Amen. He, he in a sense, kind of repeats this particular um, verse. Amen. We know the, the corner of a house top. Well, we're talking about especially back in the day how they built their, their houses. Even when we talk about uh, uh, the walls of Jericho and how the... the um, the spies came in and, and Rahab put them on top of the house and hid them because she had the, the hay. They, they had the flat houses, amen, the, the flat rooftops, amen. And so he says, he says the corner of a housetop, uh, uh, it is better to, to dwell in the corner of the housetop than when a brawling woman and in a wide house, amen. It's amazing. They said the corner of a housetop, amen. Go. Ain't, a corner ain't, ain't much, amen. Glory to mercy. Even when we talk about today, we say, hey, go, go on. It ain't about a corner. Go on. Go on, knock that on down. It, it, it ain't much. You understand what I'm saying? So, so the corner of a, of a, of a housetop is, is not much, amen. But listen to what he's saying. He said, it's better to dwell there. Amen. To be in a in a house with a brawling woman and in a uh, in a wide house. Amen. This is not so much as just with a brawling woman. Amen. Say so somebody say with a brawling companion. Yeah, Amen. Amen. And, and glory, have mercy. I'm talking about man and woman. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't talking about the other stuff. I'm talking, I'm talking about godly stuff here. Amen. Glory, have mercy. Amen. But but nevertheless, Amen. The corner of a housetop is not a great place to live. It is small, confined, and exposed to the elements because it's on the roof. Amen. Yet in some circumstances, they say the corner of the housetop is a better place to live. Amen. Depending on what else is in the house. Uh-oh, glory. Yeah. Have mercy. Amen. Tell, tell somebody, say, if you're going to be in the house, amen, you might well be everything that God called you to be in the house. Amen. Because if you're being what you're su supposed to be in the house, it's going to help everybody in the house be what they're supposed to be what? 
in the house. Somebody say, if you want peace, amen, be what you're supposed to be in the house. Amen. Glory. Hammer. Oh my God. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, I felt that thing in my spirit. Amen. That if folk come to church, amen. Glory. Have mercy. And, and be what they're supposed to be in the house of God. Hey, somebody say it'll be a, a peaceful place. Amen. Hey, it'll be a place of, of worship. It'll be a place, a place of praise. It'll be a place where folks wanna come. Uh oh, glory. But nevertheless, amen, it is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop uh, than with a brawling woman in a white house, amen, a contentious woman. You say, then in a house shared with a contentious woman, a brawling woman. To have the whole house but live in constant conflict with a contentious woman is misery, amen. The same principle would be true of a contentious man. Amen. Glory. Amen. Tell, say, brother, say you're not excluded from, not from this excluded. process. Amen. You can make the house a, a, a bad place to be just like oh, she God. can make the house a bad place to be. But tell somebody, say, but when you don't want to call, when amen. Watch this here. With the spirit of God, amen. Oh, God. You'll do the things that will cause the house to have peace. Amen. Glory. Regardless of what the other person do, amen. Tell somebody, say, blessed are the peacemakers. Oh, God. <laughs> Glory be to God. Amen. So we find this in, in uh, Proverbs, the 25th chapter, verse 24. Amen. If, if we find anything from the verse, we should find that there's a, 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 a character that we shouldn't have. Amen. We shouldn't be brawlers in, in our own house. Amen. Glory. Amen. We should, we should be kind and, and tender and, and warm and, and patient to with one another. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. Amen. Ah, that was Proverbs 25th uh, chapter, verse 24. In Proverbs the 25th chapter, verse uh, 25, the writer says this. He says, cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. Amen. Ah, man, I, 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 I can speak I, 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 look, that ought to become one of my favorite verses, amen, because I can remember uh, when I first left home, amen, when I first um, departed, amen, I was 18 years old, headed to a place called Korea, amen, didn't, didn't know nothing about being away from that small town in, in Arkansas, amen, but, but here I was cast uh, uh, in that, that position, amen, to where I'm, I'm seemed like a million of miles away, amen, and, and so when, when a letter would come from home, see, back then the internet wasn't, wasn't big, amen, you, you couldn't put, pick up the phone and just text me, say, oh, somebody help me today, anybody ever been there, amen, amen. glory, hammer, but, but you waited every day for, for the mail to come in, you go check the mailbox, every day, hoping to have a, a, a letter from mom, dad, sister, brother, auntie, uncle, a friend, anybody, <laughs> a, a pen pal, anybody, amen, and, and so when the, when the writer says this, and he says, as cold waters to a thirsty soul, amen, when a soul is thirsty, amen, ain't, ain't nothing like a good glass of water, amen, glory, amen, because it does something, what well, it does something for the soul, so, so when a person gets good news from a foreign country, amen, from a foreign place, amen, it, it's like a, a, a fresh cold glass of water, amen, it just goes down real well, and it makes the soul feel very good, amen. Amen. Uh, glory, have mercy. Um, uh, so good news from a foreign country. When we receive good news, especially from a foreign country, it brings great and life-giving refreshment. This applies to good news of many types. Not, not the, uh, the least is the gospel, the good news of what God has done in Jesus Christ to rescue all who put their trust in him. That, that's always good news. Amen. Sometimes we can be at home and still in a foreign country because we don't know God. Amen. Amen. So when we get the word of God, somebody says it's like a, a cold glass of water. Amen. It, it's, it's, it's refreshing to the soul. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. Uh, the scholar Walt T. said this. He said, in the biblical world, news traveled agonizingly slow and was delivered with great difficulty. So that extending the distance to a far off land heightens the refreshment. Amen. Glory. Have mercy today. Amen. Even good news today makes us feel good. Amen. Although we, we seem to get things, what, instantaneously, uh, uh, whether by 
text, whether by email, whether by, you, you understand what I'm saying? We got all these different things that, that bring us great news at times. And think about how that great news makes you feel. Amen. So as cold water to a, a weary, weary soul or as cold water to a thirsty soul. Amen. So is good news from a far country. Amen. Amen. That was Proverbs the 25th uh, chapter verse 25. In Proverbs 25th chapter verse 26, the writer writes, a righteous man falling down before the wicked is as a troubled fountain in a corrupt spring. Mm -hmm. Glory, Hammer. When I first read this, you know, I thought about something. I couldn't get the words right in and maybe y'all can help me. Amen. I'm going to say it in a minute here. Uh, uh, sometimes it is true that a righteous man stumbles and falters. Uh, this is always sad, uh, but even more so when it happens before the wicked. Amen. In, in the view of those who reject God and his wisdom. Amen. They, they'll try to man when a, when, a, when, a, when a righteous person of God, a man or woman, whatever fall. Amen. When the wicked see that thing. Oh, my man, they, 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 they broadcast that. Amen. The devil going to make sure what it, it's told. Amen. Why? Because he's trying to not only uh, um, damage your, your reputation, but but he's really trying to finish you off. Say, look at look what serving God will get you. Amen. You, you know what I'm saying? Because the enemy going to make it. He's he going to try to broadcast that thing. When, when the faithful of God, when the, the born again Christian, when the righteous man, the righteous woman, you know, fail, boy, if they fall before the wicked, oh, tell somebody, that's going to be a, a, a newscast. You know, back in the day when they would have the papers, they would say, uh, oh, they would, I got it now, they would say, extra, extra, read all about it. Hey, man, look here, do something wrong in front of the wicked. I, boy, I'm telling you, Satan going to have folk on every corner talking about, uh, extra, extra, read all about it. Uh, the people of God's choice church. Why? Because he's going to try to do everything in his power, what, to, to, to defame the, the name of God. Amen. amen. And, and so when we don't do right, oh, glory, have mercy, amen. Uh, and especially when we don't do right in front of the wicked, tell somebody, say, that gives him a, 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 a something to broadcast. You know what I'm saying? So, so we want to be the people what? Not giving the enemy anything to broadcast. Amen. Glory be to God. He said a righteous man falling down. A righteous man falling down is one thing. Tell somebody, say, because we can always what? Repent. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And get it right before God. He said, but when a righteous man falling down before the wicked is as a troubled fountain in a corrupt spring. Amen. God. Glory. Hammers. Oh, Lord, have mercy, man. Because what? They they going to broadcast it. Amen. <laughs> uh, it, the right, one writer said, it's like a murky spring and polluted well. Instead of the clarity and life-giving property of clean, clear water, a compromised life is like a dirty pool. It gives no life, no clarity, no refreshment, no help. Jesus Christ. Mm -mm -mm. Hey, glory, have mercy, though. The, the scholar Bridges said this. He said, the gross wickedness of the ungodly passes in silence. He said, but Satan makes the neighborhood ring with the fallings of those who profess to be Christians. Mm -hmm. hey, tell somebody, say, I know you don't like having a mark on you. Don't like it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Glory, have mercy. But tell somebody, you, you can carry the mark. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can carry the mark. Amen. Because you've been marked for, for God's what? God's goodness. You've been marked for his will. You've been marked for greatness uh, because of the greater one, what? That's in you. Amen. Somebody say, so now tell somebody, say, that's recognizing the value right oh there. That's recognizing the value. Amen. Glory be to God. A righteous man falling down before the wicked is as a troubled fountain and a corrupt spring. And that we shall not be. Amen. In the name of Jesus, glory be to you. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. That was Proverbs, the 25th chapter, verse 26. In Proverbs, the 25th chapter, verse 27, the writer says, It is not good to eat much honey, so for men to search their own glory is not glory. Amen. Glory. Here we go again with uh, looking at honey. Amen. Uh, honey is an example of God's 
uh, great gifts. Amen. Why? Because it's 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 something that's good. Amen. Amen. But tell somebody we still have to take it what in moderation. Amen. In the world of Solomon's day, sweets was rare, and nothing was sweeter than honey. Amen. They, you know, what I'm saying they didn't go around eating the blow pops and and, and the tussy rolls and yeah, you know what I'm saying. So so honey was a form of what pure sweetness. Amen. And and everybody what could could enjoy. Uh, that honey, amen. And, and it's a yet yeah, overindulgence, and even a good gift like honey is not good. It's a self control must be practiced even with good uh, things, amen. Glory, have mercy. It said, So for men to search their own glory is not glory, amen. So, uh, so to seek one's own glory is not glory. Glory can be a good thing, amen. And it is a part of God's promise to the believer, according to. Uh, uh, According to Romans, uh, the 8th chapter, verse 18, amen. Yet to seek one's own glory is not good. It's not glory at all. We should seek God's glory and not worry about our own glory, amen. If you're seeking God's glory, then you know that you're what, a part of God's glory, amen. So it's, it's a matter of knowing who you are in Christ. But but I believe the, the scholar Morgan, he uh, kind of summed this verse up when he said this. He said, much honey produces nausea. He said, so eventually it does self-glorification. Amen. Oh Glory, have mercy. <laughs> much honey produces nausea. Mm -hmm. So eventually it does self-glorification. Oh, Amen. Right now. Uh, tell somebody, say, if you're going to glorify uh, anybody, it ought to be God. Amen. Yeah. There, there's no nausea in that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Glory, have mercy. Amen. Uh, that was Proverbs, the 25th chapter, verse 27. Um, the 28th verse of Proverbs, uh, the 25th chapter is our last verse for the chapter and for tonight. It said, he that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Uh -oh. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. When I first read this, I said, man, uh, just broken down would would, would have been enough to sum it up. But he said, broken down and without walls. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. There are many who have no who have so little self-control that it can be said that they have no rule over their own spirit. Amen. The world, the flesh, or the devil rule over such people and not the spirit of self-control that is a part of of the fruit of the spirit, which can be found in the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter, verses 22 and 23. Amen. So you ought to tell somebody, say, we've been given the spirit of God. It abides in us. Amen. And because it abides in us, uh, uh, we have a, oh, glory, have mercy. I'm going to say it, but may not be the right word, but we have a duty to let that that dwells in us. Amen. Glory be to God. Have control. Because when it has control, amen, glory be to God, we will have what? Self-control, amen. Uh, a lot of folk don't have self-control. They can't help themselves as they say. They can't contain themselves. They, 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 they really can't because they are in this world of, of flesh and, and this world of desire. But, but we that are born again Christians who've been, uh, who have the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, amen. Watch this now. The, old, the Holy Ghost ain't going to overrule you. If that's what you want to do, you have to give it permission uh, uh, to have its way. What in your life? And once you give it permission, Amen. It can help you with those those, those desires. It can help you with those that, with that fleshly appetite. It, it glory and have mercy. Somebody say it'll tell the flesh, Hey, I I've been given control over here, Doc. You 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 you, uh, you stop right there. Because Pastor Watson said that he gives me the control to, to rule in his life. So, so flesh, I'm putting you under subjection right now. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. And somebody say when you when you give the Spirit of God control, amen. He's in control. Amen. Glory. I've never seen the Spirit of God uh, out of control. Now I see some folk out of control, but not the Spirit of God. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. Amen. And he goes on, he said, uh, he says, he that hath no rule over his spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls or 
broken down. Amen. Glory. Amen. Anybody uh, been anybody been in a car and, and going somewhere and all of a sudden your car broke down on you? It, it, it's, it's a terrible feeling. You know what I'm saying? To, to be in a, especially if you're in a, a secluded place. Amen. A, a place where it doesn't look like there's, there's help for miles. Amen. Go. Somebody said that, 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 that broken down. It, it, oh man, it, it, it's something else to be what in that position. But yet he say here here's a, a person that that has no rule over his soul. It's, it, 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 it's like a, a city that is broken down. I mean, everything broken down. Nothing nothing works. Amen. And and he said without walls. Amen. Don't you know without walls you're you're unprotected? Uh oh, somebody help me today. Amen. And, and when we allow our flesh to have control, it's like we have the, it's like we're this broken city, broken down, and, and we have no walls of, of protection. Amen. But tell somebody, say, but when you got the Holy Ghost, when you got the Holy Ghost amen, right you're, you're, you are dwelling in, in the presence of God. You are under his his protection. You're under his protective hedge. Amen. So, so therefore, as a born again Christian, tell somebody I refuse oh to be broken down. I Jesus. refuse to be a city that's broken down and without walls. Jesus, my God. Why? Because I'm going to abide in the spirit of God where I have self control. Amen. Self-control over my desire, self-control over my wants, self-control over those things that will cause me to err and sin against God. Tell somebody, say, I'm going to have self-control. Yes, self-control, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. Uh, uh, in Proverbs the 25th chapter, verse 28. Amen. As a born again believer. Amen. He's simply telling us, uh, stay within the spirit of of the Lord, Amen. Because in the spirit of the Lord, there are no. Uh, it's not the city is not broken down, and and the walls are maintained. Amen. Amen. Glory, have mercy. Uh, tell somebody, say you you you're a city of God, Amen. Yes, and, and He wants to, <coughs> excuse me, He wants to dwell in you and teach you what to teach you how to keep the walls uh built to keep the walls in in place. Amen. We always talking about breaking down walls. Them, them different walls. Tell somebody I said them different walls. Them Amen. Different walls. Them the walls of your heart. Amen. Glory to But we talking about this fortified city that God has called you to be. Amen. And in the fortified city, amen, people can come in and find deliverance. They can come in and find salvation. They can come in and find help. That, that's the city that God is calling you to be. Amen. Amen. That's Proverbs, the 25th chapter. Amen. Can we give God some praise for the 25th chapter of Proverbs? Amen. Glory be to God. Practical ways by which we, the people of God, can live our lives. Amen. And we thank God for it. Amen. Well, I appreciate you listening in tonight for tuning in. Amen. I pray that God will continue to bless you tremendously. I want to give a shout out tonight, amen, to my sister Sharonda Williams, who had um, uh, knee surgery today, amen. I want you to know that we're praying for you, and I pray that God will give you a, a, a quick recovery, amen. I, I know you got to learn how to walk again in some sense, but, but while you're walking, amen, just give God praise for every step, amen. amen. Give God praise for the healing, amen. Give God praise for the success, amen, and, and we're going to praise and worship God with you. Amen. amen. Well, first lady, amen. I'm going to open it up for a few minutes. Amen. If there's anything that, glory, have mercy. I, I, it's 755. Amen. amen. Glory, have mercy. Amen. Uh, uh, I'm going to give you a, a quick minute. Amen. If you got uh, 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 something that you want us to put on the prayer list, amen. First lady, Evangelist Watson is online. Amen. If you want to shoot it over, we'll make sure we'll get you on the on the prayer list. Amen. But, amen. but I want you to say, uh, uh, stay in God. I want you to continue to to seek God and seek His. Excuse me, seek His word. Amen. Uh, um, God has been good to us, y'all, and 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 He's gonna be better uh, uh, than what He's been. Amen. Glory, have mercy. But that depends on you. Amen. Oh, Glory, have mercy. He wants to be good to you. Amen. He wants to be everything to you, but but you gotta let Him be just that. 
everything. A, 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 a city that's not broken down, a city with walls, amen. The, the walls of salvation, the walls of, of healing, the walls of kindness, the walls of compassion, the walls of, of long suffering, amen. The, you know, those, those are the walls that, that we want to build our, our city with, amen. amen. Birthday, was there anything tonight? Amen to God. Be the glory. Amen. Well, saints, amen. Once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. It's been a, a, a pleasure, an honor, a privilege to share with you the word of God. I pray that the word of God uh, blesses you. Amen. And remember the book of Proverbs. It is a book of wisdom, but it's a book of practical living for us as the people of God. Amen. If we would just do what the book says. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. We, we will be blessed tremendously. Remember, God is what? A rewarder. Amen. Or those who what diligently seek him. Those who, who put his word into practice. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, saints, if there's nothing else, amen. Glory be to God. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, we thank you, God, for tonight, God. We thank you for allowing us to fellowship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, God. We thank you for the fellowship that your word gives to us, God. We thank you for the comfort that it gives to us. We thank you, God, for the encouragement and the enlightenment that it gives to us as the people of God. We pray, God, that you will continue, God, to open up our minds, God, that, that we may not only hear the word of God, but that we may be doers of the word of God. I thank you for your people tonight, God. I pray that you will bless them tremendously. And now, God, as we prepare to leave this place, but never thy presence, God, we're asking, God, that you go in us, uh, speak for us, through us, and on our behalf, by the gift of your Holy Spirit, God. Uh, let that Spirit speak the things of Christ, that we may truly not only be a blessing to people, but most of all, God, that we may be a blessing unto you. We love you, God. We appreciate you. And we thank you for it all. For us in the precious and mighty and wonderful name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we do pray this prayer, that the people of God God say amen, amen, amen and amen. Well, saints, once again, amen. We thank God for you. We thank you for tuning in. We pray that the word of God has truly blessed you. And until we see you again, as always, be thankful, be blessed, and be in God.